Mackenzie Weberg and Amber Melgoza. Coach, I will have you open and then we'll take questions. Well, for those of you that saw us for the first time, I think what you saw is a team that's battled like this all season long. And we might be short, we might be down in numbers, but um, throughout the course of this year, our team has shown the heart and the grit and the toughness in which we want our Washington women's basketball program to be all about. And I'm just proud of the fight that we showed today. Um, we could have, you know, come in and said, oh, guys, we're not supposed to win this game. You know, they're too good, they're too strong. But uh, we believed that we could do it. And uh, the two next to me and the rest of the others, they fought for 40 minutes, and I'm certainly proud of that. Thank you, Coach. And we have mics on each side. And for questions, if you would please give us your name and outlet, and we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle. Jody, uh, uh, as you pointed out, you, uh, Cal had a real uh, size advantage on you. But it was really uh, Asia Thomas there at the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth who really kind of took over the game. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that, that sequence and what she contributed to their victory? Yeah, absolutely. I think AT is a phenomenal player. She's so shifty. You know, she. Um, She's explosive, and she's able to change speeds really, really well. And she got lost a few times in our transition defense. And she was able to get downhill on us, uh, create some and one opportunities for herself, um, or some short jump shots. We lost her for a three. And uh, we're, you know, we're just so concentrated. I mean, we're maybe 6-1. I think that's a lie. I don't even think we are. but. Um, you know, we're so concentrated on down low and helping out down low. And, and sometimes, you know, you got to pick your poison a little bit. And, uh, you know, she was able to knock down some big <clears throat> shots, as is Jalen Brown. Here in the front row. Jody Steflo with the Seattle Times. Um, what do you think you guys took from the last time you played them, that end of the season game? And what was different for you today? Because it was so much closer. I think we were tougher for 40 minutes and focused for 40 minutes today. I think uh, at Seattle, we hung our head down because we weren't making shots. And that turned into some uh, lack of focus defensively in our positions. Today, nothing was going to stop our focus defensively. And we mixed it up nearly every possession uh, to try to keep Enigwe off balance a little bit and, and keep some of their players thinking. Um, out there on the floor and um, you know our team has incredible character and heart and they didn't want to just lay down and they believed and we all believed that we could win this game and uh, they played like it here in the second row oh I'm sorry in the back uh, Cheryl Coward hoopfeed.com um, you guys showed flashes of uh, what could be you know a great team in the future down the stretch late in the season and especially with Amber's contributions can you talk a little bit about that and what she's uh, brought to the team in your first year and what's impressed you yeah um, we came in you know with the mindset that we're going to play equal opportunity and give a lot of players a lot of confidence early on and within the course of the season I think we found our roles um, but I didn't define them right away because every player was a new player to us and um, over the course of the season, uh, we developed strengths and weaknesses. And I we had an insurmount, I mean, I don't even know how many starting lineups. Probably every game we played this year, you know, 30 games, we had maybe 30 different starting lineups. And I do that because I want our players to have confidence that their work in practice is worthy. Practice means something to us as coaches. And I want it to mean something to these guys. Amber's been able to really allow the game to come to her and develop a, um, she's always been so competitive. I mean, I've watched her play all through high school, California State leading scorer, I mean, she was amazing. But she's, she's really learned the game and allowed herself to be coached and be pushed and be challenged, um, to be able to um, 
score in a variety of different ways. And her team has worked well around her and there has been zero jealousies. And to me, that's, um, that's tremendous. You know, we're not a star system per se, but stars will arise at, throughout the course of the system. Um, and on any given night, anybody can step up and have a big game. And we saw that all year long with us. I think Amber's competitive will and her desire um, to want the ball in her hands and not be afraid of failure is, a, is something that she's going to take well into the working world long after you know, her playing days are over. Just not afraid of the challenge and not afraid to make a mistake. In the back row. Uh, Martina Cisneros, Pac-12 Networks. Um, for the players, you guys had a really big comeback in the second half. I was wondering what coach said to you guys during halftime. Um, oh gosh. Um, well, she um, definitely talked about how hard we were working on defense down low and in the post. And um, it was kind of more so about keeping up our hustle and not letting down, because sometimes we've had letdowns when the floor is switched when we're away from our bench. Um, so it was definitely about communication and then playing through all the possessions and kind of knowing technical stuff about what we were in. And adding on to that, um, we are, some of our shots weren't falling, um, but we knew that if we just keep shooting and just got to believe in each other, that they'll keep falling. Um, it's a bummer that we lost, but um, I'm very proud of my team and everybody, and I thought we played our butts off and we fought to the end. Here in the front row. Aaron Huang, uh, UW Daily, I guess, uh, for McKenzie. Um, I guess in the first quarter, how important was it for the team's confidence to be able to just match Cal and you guys are just going at it, scoring? Yeah, um, I think it was very important, not so much as us matching Cal, but us trying to push or beat them in terms of energy and toughness. And we were trying to play our game, which was hustle plays and getting down and dirty in the post and helping our teammates and finding open shots um, for each other. Um, so I think that was kind of like the, the key for us at the throughout the game. Bill Swartz with Como Radio. Uh, all, for all three of you, could you talk about uh, how this performance <laughs> with these kind of stakes uh, sets the tone for the future of the program? I'll start, but the girls, you guys, <laughs> they want to hear from you more than me. Um, well, first and foremost, every team that takes the floor in a Washington jersey with us coaching is going to play with that heart and hustle for 40 minutes. It might not be pretty though, you know, and there are several games that we had droughts, but we never felt like we just quit and gave up and laid down. And, um, you know, it's gonna be, they're gonna be teams that are versatile, where players can rotate in and out, players can be put in different spots on the floor, offensively or defensively, and that their versatility is gonna grow within the course of the year and within the course of their careers. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited that, uh, you know, this current 2017-18 has paved the way for, for the heart and hustle that you're gonna see for many years to come. Yeah, um, I definitely add on to what she was saying. Um, I think that our team and whoever comes to our program, and they're going to rec be recruiting some phenomenal players, but um, we're known for our hard work and giving our all. And I definitely think this off season will be something really good for us. And I think each of the players that are going to be returning next year are going to do what they can do and be better. And um, I kind of see it as like a new beginning. So, I mean, it's, our record, yeah, our record's that, but um, we're going to come together and it's going to be a new year. Yeah, I really feel like this game kind of set the tone for what's to come in the next few years, and um, it sucks that I won't be here, but um, <laughs> I really think that <clears throat> these girls, they just have so much heart and they just absolutely love each other, and you can really see the relationships on the floor um, between all, both on and off the floor. and. Um, I think even though the score wasn't what we wanted, like the outcome wasn't what we wanted, but just the way we finished so hard for 40 minutes throughout the game, I think that's just sets the tone for what's to come. And I'm excited to watch too. We'll take one more question. Do we have a, any questions further in the back? 
Dylan Carter, Blaze Radio. Um, Amber, you had a great season. You put up a lot of points. So <laughs> there's a lot to reflect on. But if you take a look back, what do you think you've learned about yourself as a player this season through that campaign? Um, well, in the beginning of the year, I knew, um, like, she seen me through high school, and so I knew how she was going to play me on the court, which um, was great. Um, but honestly, it's a, every game is a new learning experience. I mean, you're going against all-American players. You're going against people that are about to get drafted. Um, so it's a... It's awesome to go against that, but um, I just see it each day. I, after now starting now, I just know I need to get myself better in everything, as in being to be able to score more and get my teammates more open, um, to be a better passer, to work my ball handling. Um, there's a lot of things to work on, but I'm excited, and I know I'm going to work hard really um, on the off season. You got to remember that um, throughout the course of the Pac-12 season. We'd go to every gym, and Amber would be like, I've never played here before. And so it's like she's a freshman. And uh, I think it was Washington State. She said, hey, I think I played 10 minutes here. I had my best game. And, and, uh, but I, I, it's like she was a freshman. And so she learned every game um, that she was able to play. And that experience alone is irreplaceable. And, and now she's ready to tackle on that junior year. I think we'll close on that. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. A uh, quick reminder again, this press conference is streaming live on the Pac-12 social channels and our Pac-12 Now app. We welcome the California Golden Bears, Coach Lindsey Gottlieb, Asia Thomas, and Jalen Brown. Coach, we'll have you make an opening comments and we'll go from there. And again, media, please use your name and outlet when you're asking a question. Thank you. Okay, thanks um, to you all for being here and covering our great conference and these young women. Um, it's March 1st. It's the best time of year for those of us who live and breathe basketball. Um, and first want to credit uh, Washington, a team that is way better um, and way more um, accomplished than their record might, might show. Um, I've known Jody for a long time. Uh, it's not easy to take over a program, certainly not one that's 
you know, losing a gazillion points um, to graduation. Um, I think she had her team ready to play every single night, uh, certainly the three times we played them and, and the most tonight. So I think that speaks to their resilience and uh, the, those young women, um, how uh, tough that they are. So um, just wanted to say that. For our team, I, I don't think we, we were our best all around, but I thought we were together. I thought we were um, gritty. Um, I thought we got stops when we needed them and big buckets when we, when we needed them. Um, AT was was tremendous in the clutch, but I thought it was you know an all-around uh, team performance. And um, Jalen's minutes off the bench were incredibly big for us. Um, and and across the board, I thought we did what we needed to do, and we're happy to be playing tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. Questions? Front row. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle. Um, Aisha, at the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth, you went on a huge run uh, as a team, but you scored 12 out of the 14 points, I think it was. Can you talk a little bit about what got you going in that, uh, in that stretch? Because uh, you, they were, you were obviously getting a lot of points in transition, but I was just wondering what it, what it felt, what got you going, what was going through your head? We weren't scoring, so I know that was a motivation. Um, whether it was for me to score or getting other teammates involved to score, but um, it was just opportunity for me to score. I had transition buckets, um, kickouts from Kiana. Um, I'm not sure, Jalen possibly, but it was just opportunities for me to knock down shots and get my team to lead again. Shell Coward, HoopFeet.com. Um, Lindsay, this is the third time you guys faced them this season, and you know, even though you beat them those two times, it's still kind of a danger of facing a team a third time, especially in a tournament. Um, what were the things that you felt you needed to focus on, and that Washington uh, may have come forward and tried to, you know, get your number in this game? Well, we, we have such a contrast in style, so they play a five-out motion, which forces our you know, uh, post players to have to guard on the perimeter. We know that's a challenge playing them. And then they have a, an elite scorer in uh, Amber Melgoza. So I think we focused on uh, trying to defend them really well and consistently. And at the same time, I thought a great adjustment they made. And we just annihilated them in the paint the first two times we played them. And if you look, they, they really tried to take that away. And our three leading scorers were, were guards. Um, again, maybe speaks to our growth that we don't have to, um, you know, put all our eggs in one basket. But I think they did a nice job adjusting, saying, uh, we're going to play you a little bit differently. Um, and, and they still did what they do on offense, which is try to spread you out and, and get the court really wide so Melgoza has driving lanes and their, their bigs can, can shoot threes. Um, I, I think we weathered that storm well enough, but I think they did a nice job kind of going to their strengths. Tom in the front. Oh, I'm sorry, back row. And then we'll go front row. Dylan Carter, Blaze Radio. <coughs> Uh, so you closed out this game tonight. How do you think that little experience there is going to help you against UCLA? I mean, I think totally different styles of play. But, um, you know, my first couple years back in the conference as head coach, we had the, we had the bye. Um, and you're always a little nervous, you know, coming out in that, that first game when the other team has played. The last couple years, we haven't had the bye. Um, and, and I think you, you try to use that um, as an advantage in terms of your players are settled in a little bit. They know what postseason basketball is like. They kind of get their sea legs under them, so to speak. So I don't think there will be similarities in terms of the styles of the game, just two really different teams. But I'm hoping that our players just kind of have, um, you know, a little bit of confidence coming out knowing we just won on this court. And there's a huge task ahead of us with UCLA. They're so good and they're a top 10 team nationally for a reason, but we'll try to, you know, get ourselves in the mentality right from the tip that, hey, you know, we understand March basketball and we have to make some noise tomorrow from the beginning. Tom? Tom Fitzgerald uh, from the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, Lindsay, uh, Christina Nigway had a fairly quiet game in, in this game as opposed to the, the game against the Huskies on Sunday. Uh, but she did have nine rebounds. I, I guess it, was it just uh, what you were alluding to that the Huskies were, were packing it in uh, against your bigs uh, in, in this game? Yeah, I mean, I think what you call quiet on the stat sheet is three people on her, right? So they, they weren't guarding one of, or two of our players at times. And so that we've learned how to play through that. We've learned how to take advantage. Um, uh, and so 
that's where we're a tougher team. That if, if you're going to try to make her have a quiet night, it's going to be at the expense of giving other really good players open looks. I thought Jalen was terrific with her pull-up jumper because she comes into the paint and, okay, two people are going to hang low on Christine. She's going to knock that down. If they came up on her, she'd make the pass. Uh, I thought she did a better job in the second half, obviously, of, um, you know, getting herself going. I think she had, you know, four for six or whatever in the second half and just kind of let it come to her. But more so, I think it speaks to that we're kind of a tough team to scout if you, if you have to pick your poison on, on who you're going to try to take away. Cheryl Coward, Hoofbeat.com. Um, AT, time and time again this season, especially you've uh, come through for the, your team down the stretch and with this sort of competitive fire to kind of like we're not going to lose this game if it comes down to me. And uh, the Washington coach kind of credited you with that today as well. Can you talk a little bit about that and what goes through your mind at, at these points when you're like, you know, we can't lose? Um, I think that's just how I was brought up in the game of basketball, especially where I'm from, um, to always have a certain toughness deep down um, in yourself. And I don't know. I mean, I don't want to lose. <laughs> I know my team doesn't want to lose. So if, if that's me that day or it could be Michaela some days, Nina. Um, but it's, it's always some fire in me that doesn't um, allow myself um, and then my teammates um, to lose. So I think it's, it's just a, a fire that I always have. Front row again, Tom. Jalen, I noticed that when you uh, came down with an offensive rebound, you uh, 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 had a pretty key point in this game. You had a big smile on your face. Um, don't know if you remember that, but uh, uh, I was struck by that, but I also want to ask you uh, your thoughts as you were watching AT a go, go wild on that, that stretch at the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth. Um, to comment on the board, I was just happy because it was a pivotal time. Um, we needed that, so I just wanted to do that for my team. Uh, but Tizi here, <laughs> she's a bucket. <laughs> Um, I think mean, she's a great spark for us. Like whenever we're low, um, we can always count on her to just pick us back up, and she's just a person that I can always count on. <laughs> Any further questions? Yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you, Cal. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs>